Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Sybin here for the Ether Hub, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. To coincide with a video done by Nizahan here on the Hub, where he takes an analytical look at the top goblins in Magic the Gathering, I want to examine the goblin race in MTG through a lore lens. We'll be discussing goblins from various planes and how they differ in terms of appearance and culture, as well as how the race remains somewhat constant across all aspects of Magic the Gathering storytelling. So, thank you for joining the Hub as we go over goblins and the lore of Magic the Gathering. The goblin race has been around since the earliest days of Magic the Gathering, and it's not surprising. These little mischievous monsters are a staple in fantasy genres, making them perfect for the lore of MTG. Following stereotypes, a majority of goblins are depicted as small, gnarly creatures of suspect intelligence. Regardless of their smarts, which varies from plane to plane, goblins seem to be universally curious creatures with short tempers and a bad sense of judgment. Like elves, goblins are one of the few creature types, which includes humans, that seem to be natives to almost every plane in the multiverse. As they evolve on different environments, goblins from different planes grow different traits and characteristics, some looking fairly familiar to what you'd imagine a goblin looking like, and others stepping far away from the norm. So let's compare and contrast the goblins spread across the multiverse of MTG. Dominaria is the apex of the multiverse, key to some of the biggest storylines of MTG. As the centerpiece to major events, you can bet this first lore hub has its fair share of goblins. As this creature type changes from plane to plane, Dominaria being as massive as it is, hosts its own unique pool of goblin species, each being slightly different from one another. We won't go over every single tribe, because we'd be here all day, but here's a few of the goblins you'd find on Dominaria. The goblins of Kalimen have green skin as opposed to the traditional red, use firearms and more advanced weapons than their cousins do due to their crafty ingenuity and availability of technology. Otarian goblins make their lives in the mountains and have taken a liking to fire and explosions. While they often use these forces for mischief, they more often than not end up hurting themselves rather than their targets. Razorfin goblins are a strange mixed breed of goblins and merfolk found on Dominaria. It's believed that this mutation occurred during the Wrathy Overlay, but little else is known. For most, the simple idea of goblins underwater is enough to understand the nature of Razorfins. Shivan goblins trace their history back to the ancient Thranes, forced into slavery to build great works of technology. These artifacts have since been forgotten, but these goblins still hold an affinity for the small steel marvels they once worked on. Dominaria is also home to various mutated and zombified goblins, those unlucky souls lost to hideous deformities or summoned back from the dead. Without masters, these abominations run wild on the plane, attacking anything they fancy. While goblins may be temperamental and cruel at times, many would still prefer a whole group of them when compared to one of these perverse variants. Dominaria is the classic standard of goblins in Magic the Gathering, but their diversity doesn't end there. Let's look at the variety of this race found on the plane of Laurelwyn. Unlike others of their kind, the goblins on this world are known as Boggarts, a subrace Boggarts seem to have no real physical similarities, each Boggart looking and even acting completely different from one another. What they do share, however, is a dark sense of humor, a strong belief in shamanism, and a severely reduced capacity for learning. They are extremely mischievous, yet not intentionally evil, even sometimes having a sense of honor and civility. They even have laws, well, one anyway that no single boggart can hoard any one object or sensation upon fear of exile. It may not be very much, but hey, it's a lot better than some of the goblin societies out there. Yet, Lorwyn is unique because it has a split personality, the world of Shadowmoor which lurks just below the horizon. When the Great Aurora is summoned, the plane changes, and so does its resident goblins. No longer are they solely the boggarts, they splinter off into various groups of sub-races, each more disturbing than the last. 
On Shadowmoor, Bogarts go from mischievous to animalistic, relying on instinct and hunger to motivate their actions, oftentimes with a deadly result. They also branch off into the Redcaps, a group of goblins fueled only by malicious intent with an unhealthy desire to kill anything they see. The Spriggans align with green mana rather than red. They are also able to grow to gigantic sizes at will. And the mysterious Steamhoppers, which little is known of. They seem to only have one of each set of limbs and a single eye. Strange in appearance and even more so in behavior. Yet not all of these subgoblins seem to have drawn the short end of the straw in Shadowmoor. The Hobgoblins actually turned out quite nice. They're mild-tempered, relatively speaking, and wear somewhat fresh clothing. While the dark change may have impacted many of the Boggarts on Lorwyn, it's clear that it didn't doom them all. While Lorwyn was split into two worlds, the Plain of Alara is separated into five shards, eventually becoming merged as a result of Nicol Bolas. Previously, though, the only shard to have native goblins was the Shard of Jund. The goblins of Jund exist in a world of survival of the fittest, of which, they're basically the bottom of the food chain. This barbaric world is eat or be eaten, and everything from humans to dragons feasts upon the goblins here, who survive basically out of pure numbers. Strangely enough, the goblins on Jund worship the dragons of the plain, believing it to be a great honor to be devoured by one of the beasts. So far, the goblins we've seen adhere relatively well to our general ideas of the race, but on the strange world of Kamigawa, they take a real turn to the weird. On Kamigawa, goblins are known as Aki, or little monsters, inhabiting the mountains of the plain. They are small, hunched creatures with mud-colored skin and a tough, bony, spiky exterior shell on their backs. While they may look very different from traditional goblins, Aki do share some personality traits, such as being highly territorial, protecting their mountains from all intruders, one of the more famous Aki being Kikijiki. There also once existed a race of water Aki known as Kappas. They've since gone extinct, but one of their shells shows that they were much more turtle-like in appearance. On the plain of Tarkir, back before Sarkon Vol forever changed the world with his time travel shenanigans, goblins were found both in the Teemer and Mardu clans. Those of the Mardu were fierce warriors such as Ankleshanker, who managed to bring glory and victory to the clan's marauding raids. While those of the Teemer have evolved thick hair to keep them warm in the frigid frontier, they've become more like a pack of wolves than sentient fighters scavenging what food they can, and throwing themselves at whatever game they can find. Those of this race found on the world of Zendikar, a plane ravaged by the monstrous Eldrazi, have grown a great deal as their world has changed rapidly over the years. Most are territorial and mischievous, not so unlike goblins elsewhere, but others on Zendikar are more playful pranksters than dangerous. Before the rise of the Eldrazi, the Tuk Tuk clan followed their leader of the same name, a brave goblin who lost everything in search of the shiniest objects on Zendikar, even his body. Luckily, he came back as a giant golem and now rules as king. Yet, after the Eldrazi broke from their prison, the world went into panic mode, and there was no need for racial norms. Most goblins abandoned their home of Akum and joined with other survivors in their last stand to save Zendikar. The final plane in which goblins are prevalent that I'd like to talk about in this video also happens to be my personal favorite, and that's the plane of Ravnica. Ravnica has a different approach when it comes to these python-sized miscreants, in that they aren't your typical dim-witted brutes. On this plane, they're actually quite bright, intuitive, and in some cases, ingenious. These are the tinkerers, inventors, artificers you sometimes see on other planes, but taken to the extreme. Though some of their experiments end in collateral damage, they always seem to come right back with even more bright ideas. Of course, these are only the goblins found in the Izzet Guild. There are others on Ravnica with less intellectual integrity, such as those goblins of the Gruul Clan. Outcasts shunned from the city limits, they're accepted based on their berserking nature and shamanistic magic. And those of the Rakdos Guild, followers of the goblin god of bad luck, 
they cover themselves in spiky armor called kill suits, wildly throwing themselves at enemies with little thought of their own safety. Among this rabble of insanity, besides the Izzet goblins, there are those of more sane nature, such as those of the Boros Legion, low-level grunts equipped with respectable arms and armor. They do as they're commanded, and their fellow soldiers see them as nothing more than trained animals, but at least they found order in this city of turmoil. No matter where they hail from, goblins have made a significant impact on the story and scenery of Magic the Gathering. But let's not forget the most noble and honorable of these tiny terrors. The knight of all that is good in the world of MTG, Squee. Let's never forget his sacrifice of being impaled and torn apart over and over again, only to be revived and killed again. He was a crucial crew member of the Skyship Weatherlight, which would eventually end Yogmoth. His sacrifice will never be forgotten. And that, everyone, is the lore of goblins throughout the multiverse of Magic the Gathering. Let me know your favorite goblin cards in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the Ether Hub, consider liking the video, sharing it with friends, and subscribing for more awesome MTG content. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time here on the Ether Hub.